What is up, YouTube? Ruben here, and today we're going to be reviewing this Compact Rosario CQ5500F as referenced by the spec sheet. So, I actually got this machine uh, two years ago. So, yeah. So, let's go ahead and start reviewing this compact Rosario desktop. Here on the front, you're gonna see the power and the hard drive indicators. DVD drive, I don't have a optical drive installed. You'll get a DVD burner. The expansion bay for another DVD burner or DVD drive. Here you got the headphone and microphone uh, jacks. Here you got two USB 2.0 ports, the compact logo, the compact Rosario designation, and here you got three stickers the AMD, NVIDIA, and Windows 7 stickers. Now let's take it to the left. Here on the left, you'll get the power button and the side panel. Let's turn it for one hand. Here on the back, we got a power supply. This is a 200 watt Dell power supply. It should have came with a. It sh you should have a 350 watt power supply or 250 watt. If I'm not mistaken, it was a light on power supply. That was stock. Here you got the four slots. That's supposed to be PCI. I suppose, and yeah, here we got uh, audio jacks, we got line in, line out, and microphone, four USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet, VGA, and two PS2 ports. Let's go ahead and before we get to the right, I'm going to show you, well, what slots are being used. Okay, for the slots used, this is PCI. These two right here are a PCIe X1. This one is PCIe X16, so you can put a graphics card in there. You could try putting a NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030 in there if you want to. And that's how these slots work. Now, let's get you to the right. I should have closed the side panel before I actually uh, turned the computer. Here you got like the voltage information, your Windows 7 key, which I don't care, you can take it, I don't want it. Here you got the spec sheet here. Now, let's take you to the specs. Oh, and by the way, you got the serial number. Any model number. Okay, now well, now let's get you to the specs. Now it's time for the specs. So by looking at this spec sheet right here, uh, I don't see. Okay, hold on, hold on right there. I need to turn on the flashlight, so I'll be back. Okay, now you see it better. So oh, there's a roach right here. Sorry, these roaches tend to get into computers. So, here for the processor, we got a 1.7 gigahertz, or actually a 2.7 gigahertz AMD Sun Front 140. It's socket AM3, 2 gigs of RAM. The hard drive was originally 500 gigs, but it's actually having a 320 gig hard drive, and it's running. Windows 7. It's running Windows 7 Ultimate. No, it's not running Windows 7 Home Premium. And yes, eh, when I first got it, it came with Windows XP eh, on that 500 gig hard drive. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in and get to the BIOS. Here are the cables that we're going to be using, except for one. We're going to be using the keyboard, 
and this is the mouse that's the keyboard this is the power connector this is the DVI cable which we I won't be using so I'm gonna be using if I grab it a VGA cable so that's what this computer is gonna be using so that's gonna be the same thing with the white compact the compact Presario 5000 series so let's go ahead and put this thing up okay so I got everything plugged in except for that power connector let's go ahead as UXW Bill says will it explode Well, it did not power on. That's good. Got this air appropriate uh, HP monitor. Let's go ahead and power it on. So I'm gonna pause the video and move the computer. Then I'll resume it, and then I will go ahead and power it on. Okay, so I'm using the HP 2010i. I have several videos used for the Dell Precision T5500, the HP XW4600 workstation, and the Dell Autoflex GX280. Let's go ahead and pair it on. As UXW Bill says, smoke test. Or, if I was going to say that, smoke test. You'll see a compact logo. I'm going to hit F10. There you go, it's entering setup. And there you go. It has a Seagate hard drive, or as you can with a Western digital hard drive. In the boot section where it says boot device priority, you can copy uh, the settings if you want. let it run okay let's go ahead and exit and boot into windows okay so we're in windows 7 so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click computer hit properties as you can see it's running windows 7 ultimate service pack 1 and the wei score got a 3.3 .3. I named the computer Windows Win 7 PC. Let's go ahead and click on Windows Experience Index. So we got 4.5 for processor, 5.5 for RAM, 3.7 for graphics, 3.3 for gaming, and a 5.9 for the hard drive. So one thing to notice about this, if you have a 5.9, that's the maximum it can take. But there was something different about the hard drive score my HP uh, Pavilion G7 and it scored a 7.2 so yeah let's go ahead and get to the programs that I installed okay so for the programs I got 7zip, Adobe Reader XI, Bandicam, C Cleaner, CPU-Z, Fraps, Google Chrome and Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5.2, Office 2010, Virtual PC 2007 which I'll have a link to both the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions in the video description. Um, Firefox 55.0.1, VirtualBox 5.1.22, Specky, VLC, Win to USB, and Westry. Now let's go ahead and do some benchmarks. Okay, before I benchmark, here, uh, here where it says level 2, this one has 1 megabyte of cache. So yeah, let's go ahead and benchmark it and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to click on Bench CPU. See what it scores.
Here's one of my neighbor's truck uh, coming in. And there you go. With the uh, Sempro 140, you get 66.6. .6. For multi-thread and single thread, it's only 66.2. Now it's a single core processor, so let's go ahead and benchmark using Fraps. And I'm going to be benchmarking the game, which is called Finance the Freddy's World, or FNAF World, if you want to say that. It all depends. I always use that game to actually benchmark uh, how much uh, FPS, or which stands for frames per second. Uh, okay. So see the average, minimum, and maximum. So I'll be back, and I'll be benchmarking to see the game, and we'll see what it scores. Now, to get to Fraps, I'm going to click on Fraps, which I did. You're going to see a window like this. And make sure that benchmark settings, FPS, is checked. And make sure it's set to F11. You can pause the video if you like. Normally, I would put it on the uh, uh, left. Get a better result here so yeah let's go ahead and benchmark it using FNAF world or find us a Freddy's world yeah this one which has the Freddy logo on it and we're gonna go ahead and benchmark it so I'll be back okay so I'm done benchmarking uh, find us a Freddy's world so now I'm gonna hit my computer see Fraps, benchmarks, Fraps log. See what it scored. Okay, this is not bad. Average is around uh, 50 FPS. Minimum of 42 and a maximum of 61. Okay, yeah. Let's go ahead and I'll put the uh, actual uh, estim uh, estimated results uh, if you want to. See how I got that. So yeah, with the average of 50 FPS, it's not bad. Let's go ahead and uh, do some progress through the programs here. So I'll be back. Okay, so I'm gonna run Google Chrome since everyone likes that web browser. And there we go, it opens just like that. And yes, before you ask, Fraps is still running. They're gonna close out of fraps. Let me close out of fraps. Let's try it again. So I don't get that frame rate. And there you go. Google Chrome. Now I'm gonna run. Uh, you know what? Let's go run one program at a time because I wanna make this be. I think I'll try to make the video short. If not, eh, yeah, it's okay. So yeah, Windows Movie Maker will not run on this, so it must run some sort of old version of Windows Movie Maker, say Windows Movie Maker 2.6. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to the conclusion. One thing I did forget to mention is the graphics, so let's go ahead and right click and hit screen resolution, and I'm going to hit on, I'm going to click on advanced settings, and this is the NVIDIA GeForce 6150 SE. 256 megabytes with shared system RAM of 639 gives you a total of 895 and yes it is Windows 7 ready so yeah yeah that's how it works okay now I'll get to the conclusion so in conclusion is it worth it it's okay if you're gonna be able to use the internet but yeah, probably a little bit here on the no side because one uh, with the graphics card that's in here and it's not powerful enough to actually run Windows Movie Maker at least I can try it uh, because, because Windows Movie Maker ran on my HP Pavilion G7 which I already have a review on it and this Dell Precision T5500 and that's and that's uh, how I made the, the optimization guide, the Glendo Beal on LC5 videos that I uploaded on the I believe it was the ninth. 
Yeah, it's the 9th. August 9th. So, yeah. The 6150 SC is not good enough for Windows 10. So, keep in mind that if you're going to be using Windows 10, I would recommend that you put a better graphics card like a GT 1030. Now, don't try to put a GTX 750 Ti in there. As this power supply that's in here is weak, so I would recommend you replace the power supply before putting a GTX 750 Ti if, if you're going to do that. So otherwise, that um, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, running Windows 10 with the proper drivers. So keep in mind, the 6150 SE is not supported for Windows 10. Yes, you could try to run the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. And that's how this computer works. It just not supported for Windows 10. Well, it could. Now, yes, it did run Windows 10. But you're not going to have some time with the graphics driver that is going to be installed. And, and you're not going to be able to install that driver from the HP website. And yes, you could try to install that driver from NVIDIA's website. But I don't think that's worth your uh, chance of running Windows 10. And that's it. That is a review of this compact Presario CQ5500F. So, that's it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And make sure you hit that bell icon when I upload new videos. And I will see you next time.